Here we are, it's 2024, and the keyboard that typically sits at my desk, connected to my primary PC, has at present been displaced by this modern day keyboard. It's a Logitech G512, it's a mechanical keyboard with uh, GX Blue key switches and of course all the uh, lovely cheap build construction that you get with just about everything these days. And this is a half decent keyboard, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's clicky, but it just doesn't have that thoroughly satisfying tactile feedback and response that an IBM Model M has. And I'm not going to waste everybody's time that's watching this video, because those that know, know that the Model M offers some of the uh, most delightful typing uh, response and experience compared to uh, rubber dome keyboards. And honestly, this keyboard, this... Uh, Logitech G512 with GX Blue uh, key switches is not that bad, but it's not that great. And ultimately, I would still prefer to use my Model M. However, the plot thickens. Those that watched uh, my original video of bolt modeling this particular Model M know that it was my first attempt at doing so and was brought about by this thing having very bizarre and kind of uh, inexplicable behavior, unreliable behavior with uh, keystrokes not registering correctly or uh, double pressing the key, acting as though you've double tapped the keys and so on and so forth. And even though I received some criticism in the comments of my bolt modding video because it wasn't really a tutorial though many people were expecting it to be so, though I certainly wouldn't consider myself the foremost authority in how to properly bolt mod one of these old dinosaurs uh, that video was pretty much the short, skinny, abridged version of what was a multi-day challenge to bolt mod a keyboard for the first time ever, an IBM Model M, of course. So that had, uh, for a number of months, brought this keyboard back into a reasonably, reasonably reliable operation. Uh, but I think it was just a bit of a, a kind of a, a chance encounter, uh, a freak encounter that ended up fixing something though not correctly. And I always suspected that this Model M had issues with the membrane, which for anybody who's unfamiliar with what a membrane is, at least in these keyboards, this is the membrane, which is what's responsible for interpreting your keystrokes, these individual traces or buttons, whatever you want to call them, on the membrane. And then this gets connected to the controller board on the keyboard and then uh, sent to your computer via PS2. But uh, it seems to be the general consensus that of those that bolt mod their keyboards, a great many of them uh, have problems reusing the original membranes because usually drinks have been spilled over the years, uh, traces have uh, been burned up for lack of a better word, and that's what kind of happened to the original membrane in this Model M. I remember vaguely uh, a year, two years ago, going to the effort of trying to clean this thing and the cleaner ended up working its way in where it shouldn't have and got itself lodged into the different layers of the membrane and through uh, capillary action ended up causing things to uh, in essence short out and I remember after that little incident having the uh, keyboard kind of have a mind of its own and start typing phantom letters without my touching it or typing on it so I've always had a sneaking suspicion that it was the membrane of course I tried taking the easy way out and bolt modding it but uh, that seems not to be enough anymore because it's not working. So believe it or not, Unicomp, the people that have uh, taken over the uh, reins from IBM and Lexmark, well, they sell parts. And I was able to locate a replacement membrane assembly for port number 1391401, which is also the port number for this keyboard around twenty dollars I believe it was something like that plus another it actually might have been fifteen dollars for the membrane plus ten dollars shipping for twenty five dollars shipped to my door I now have a new membrane that was the easy part even if the shipping was a bit sluggish the really irksome bothersome trepidatious uh, tedium is going to be taking this keyboard apart again and swapping this thing in well no time like the present and to begin, you need a 7.30 seconds shallow wall socket 
to remove the not one, two, three, but four screws that hold the clamshell of the case together. I'm nothing if not an expert when it comes to uh, bolt mounting these things. Just trying to uh, blindly follow those that have gone before me and done this process as I really can't, uh, I could surely just go ahead and buy a new IBM Model M second hand. When I say brand new, I mean due to me, one that actually works on like this one. But honestly, this keyboard is in such stellar cosmetic condition that I just can't justify that. This thing is really clean. Definitely one of the better preserved examples of one. And now I have to remove all, whatever this is, 101 keys. And being that this is an older Model M, these are a two-piece keycap design, so you have to take the top ones off that actually have the printed uh, numbers and letters on them. And then the bottom ones, which are a bit trickier, require a bit more um, finesse to remove because they actually click into place, whereas these just sit on top. So with the keycaps out of the way, you get a better look at the barrel plate. And there's a lot more cracks in here than I remember last time I was in here. Probably had something to do with the fact that I was getting rather heavy-handed to get this keyboard to cooperate. It's a pretty sizable crack right there. There's one right there. And then there's one forming up here, so that's nothing that a little super glue can't fix, and I am well stocked when it comes to that. Once I get this thing buttoned up, I will certainly uh, be using uh, copious amounts of super glue to uh, repair this thing and keep it from cracking in multiple fragments. Flipping it over, this is where the challenging part becomes uh, readily apparent. Now I have to undo all my handiwork, all these bolts and nuts, washers, everything has to come out now so that I could again separate the layers that comprise a Model M, the layers of a cake so to speak. Well hopefully the worst is behind us, behind me. All the keycaps have been removed as well as all of the hardware that comprises a bolt mod. And now if all goes to plan, I should just be able to remove this metal back plate. And put that out of the way. And here we go, gaining access to the original membranes that have been in this thing since uh, 1993, I believe, was when this was manufactured. 1992, actually. And if I'm careful enough, I might not even have to mess around with the key switches themselves. So here's yet another look at that original membrane. And, uh, you know, as I had detailed, I believe, albeit rather abruptly, in my original bolt mod video, there were a number of questionable looking traces on here that, uh, well, they don't look visibly broken, but they must be uh, causing some kind of an issue, especially like over here. They look black, they look almost burned to my untrained eye. And then this is, uh, of course, the brand new one. One thing I'll admit off the bat, aside from, of course, not being an expert when it comes to this, and, uh, well, this is going to be proof of that, it's a little confused about how exactly they want you to go about uh, dealing with these clear plastic tabs on the new membrane. Now, I had actually taken the initiative to email Unicomp uh, to ask for clarification on this matter. Because there's actually mention on the PC Keyboard uh, Unicomp website when purchasing a new membrane, uh, this mention here that the IBM keyboard was made with uh, two different style membranes. Uh, the older version used a, separable, a separate flexible circuit for the LEDs, which mine actually has. Uh, not a separate, it's integrated into the cable. And they even go so far as to provide two photos here of what exactly it is they're talking about. And in the first photo, there is this uh, description where they, they tell you to uh, remove this part of the ribbon cable. And you don't actually discard it, but you well, I actually have this oriented the wrong way according to the photo. But you would take a very sharp, like an X-Acto knife, and remove this, these traces, and separate, pretty much essentially separating this part of the uh, ribbon cable, the flexible, the circuit cable, whatever you want to call this thing, 
you're going to remove the four traces so that way you could remove this thing and disconnect it and have it liberated from this main connector. But I'm a little confused by this photo here. So they mentioned that the clear membrane tabs that are shown on number one and number two should not be inserted into the Triomate connector, which is uh, those connectors that uh, these ribbon cables connect to on the controller board. So it shows these plastic tabs, which are right here. There's one. Got one here. There's some there. There's also one here on the small little uh, connector that goes to the LEDs. And it says that the clear tab shown number three should be folded over on the perforation and inserted into the connector. So I guess what you're supposed to do then is this one is supposed to, but see there's two here, this is what I'm confused about, but I think what I'll just have to end up doing is using the original one as a template, and I'll just copy everything onto this one, because those pictures and the description on the site leave a little bit to the imagination. I think I gotta figure it out mostly. So, you can see that this topmost membrane, layer of the membrane, has this plastic tab that gets folded over the cable on the top side. Uh, that's exactly what I did here, and then I guess this bottom membrane, which you can barely see on camera, but it's that one right there, that's uh, flapped in the wind, that just doesn't get used for anything, and I would assume you probably cut that off. I might just leave it in place depending on how insulation goes. And then removing that, of course you have this uh, intermediate layer, and then this one over here, this big ribbon cable, which... Um, doesn't have any tab folded over like this smaller connector, so that needs to, I guess, be clipped off or just not utilized. So the original membrane, the middlemost layer, had enough material left behind for the LED board to sit on top of and be adhered to, whereas this replacement membrane, uh, there's really nothing there, there's just this protective tab piece, which is not even supposed to be there, so it's going to be a little difficult getting this to adhere there, because you can see if I lift it up, it's almost sitting where there is no material of the membrane, except for over here. What I think I'm going to end up doing is uh, I have these little glue dots that are saved from some Christmas uh, something or other decoration that included them and they're like little dots of glue and I think what I'll do is just place them on this original foam board as best as I can and adhere that as best as I can. I, I really can't do anything else about that because there's like nothing to attach it to compared to the original membrane. Oh well. Alright, I'm pretty pleased with that. I was able to apply a couple of those glue dots and uh, got that reasonably secured. And I just realized that I made a pretty major screw up that's going to cost me quite a bit of time. I didn't need to remove the screws that were coming in from the barrel plate on the side where the keycaps are. I could have just left them in place and removed the nuts and the washers and now put the membrane in place and the back plate and then put the nuts back on. No, I just made myself uh, a lot more work because there's no way now that I'm going to be able to get those screws started without flipping this black this uh, barrel plate over. And in doing so, all of these key switches, whatever you want to call them, flippers, are going to have to come out, including this one that I actually had to doctor a little bit because my uh, bolt was a little off-center, my hole and then the bolt, and the flipper was uh, hanging up. So you might notice on the right, the little ear, I had to grind that down a bit. So now i got to take all of these out to be able to flip this thing over, to thread the, the screws back in. I should have just left them in place. Oh, can I say this is amateur hour? It most certainly is. Don't follow me. I'm lost. Really, really hoping that this will return this keyboard to operational condition. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to say some unkind words about it. And I may even get uh, mildly violent with it because this is more work than most people probably would ever consider putting into an input device for a computer. So, fingers crossed, this works. All right, rapidly approaching completion, and what I was able to do is use these audiobook, uh, CD audiobook cases on either side, wedge them in place, and uh, kept this from wanting to walk off, because normally if you just have this sitting on like two by fours or books even, 
you know, it wants to walk off and just you moving this thing, it ends up falling and then all the uh, key spring, uh, key switches or the springs, the flippers, whatever you want to call them, become dislodged. And I just had to make a small little relief uh, cut in the membranes right here because this one off-center screw was preventing the uh, membrane from sitting properly flat. So I did that with a pair of uh, very dull snips, but uh, nonetheless was able to get it done. Everything else is uh, looking pretty copacetic right now, so I think we are ready to install the metal backplate. Everything is uh, getting buttoned up right now. I have all the uh, bolts, screws, uh, the nuts and the washers installed, and finger tight, torqued to the uh, correct spec. <laughs> So now before I take a much deserved break, what I'm going to do is uh, use only the finest, and by finest I mean the cheapest super glue possible. I'm not going to use that uh, epoxy that I used last time with the powder, which just gets on everything and makes a mess. And I am going to take the opportunity now that this is um, screwed onto the back plate. Many people have mentioned this on the forums to use this opportunity now to glue it as opposed to trying to glue it while it's uh, removed from the back plate and it doesn't hold its its curved shape, it's flat, then when you go to put it back on the back plate, it'll just crack again. So now that it's probably reasonable to assume that I'm never going to take this thing apart again, got everything uh, glued up now, I'm just going to let it dry. The only thing that might be a bit of a problem, I'm hoping it won't be, is right there where the anti-rattle clip or whatever they call that little metal this bar on the space bar. I hope that the uh, little bit of glue that I got on there does not cause this to bind up. Uh, only one way to find out, but before that point comes, I gotta wait for all this super glue to dry. And after a number of days now, we are back at the computer, and so is my IBM Model M. And I'm rather pleased to announce that the repair was successful. In fact, I can't even remember the last time this keyboard was 100% reliable. It's taking some getting used to now to just be able to type and not have to think about what you're typing and check what's actually showing up on the screen. Upon reassembly, I noticed that my left arrow keys, uh, well, left arrow key and then the ones adjacent to it were actually binding up. And that was, I realized, because when I assembled this, I when I put the, the top of the clamshell on and uh, tighten the screws on the back. What ended up happening is as I was reassembling the keyboard and attaching this top to clamshell on, I didn't make sure that it was centered relative to the keys. And so what ended up happening is this top cover of the keyboard was shifted all the way over, actually this way, <laughs> which was causing these keys over here, this arrow key, to rub up against the case, causing it to bind up. And uh, that was easily resolved just by loosening the four screws that are on the back of the keyboard and then moving this over and centering this cover. And now, don't have any problems whatsoever. Now, as far as the indicator lights go, my uh, little glue dot um, method of adhesion of the board, uh, because the original uh, double-sided tape or whatever it was they used, you know, 30 years ago, obviously, was... Uh, not salvageable. Seems to be doing the trick. Of course, this keyboard's not going to be getting jostled around too terribly much, so I won't have any problems whatsoever. And they all are working correctly. The only thing I've noticed is that the Numlock LED is uh, markedly dimmer than the rest, although that's not a hard thing to believe, considering that that light is usually the only one that's on the majority of the time that the keyboard is uh, well, on. I really can't begin to describe what an improvement uh, to my uh, PC computing uh, needs having a working keyboard has made. No longer do I have to stare at the screen to make sure everything is typing correctly or the frustration of realizing after you've typed a password in or something that the keyboard has not registered half of your key presses or it's double and triple tap certain keys and then you have to backspace and start over. Everything is working flawlessly. So it really is quite fortuitous that those of us that uh, still want to hang on to our old keyboards and service them and keep them running can still get parts from Unicomp, the people now behind the continued manufacturer of the new IBM Model M. Certainly much cheaper to do it yourself, especially considering that uh, while they 
well, very fortunately, offer a repair service for those that don't want to tackle this sort of thing on their own. Well, for what I would probably, uh, what would be needed, a Class 2 keyboard repair for a repair of an IBM keyboard, which is what this one is, uh, would cost $60, and I only paid about $25 for my new membrane. The only thing I don't see available on their website, but I've, I've heard rumors that it does exist, maybe I'll send them an email, is the ability of uh, uh, sourcing new barrel plates because uh, even though this one is working at the moment, the number of, uh, the multitude of cracks that it has is not sitting too well with me. A number of people online, from what I have been able to read, pretty much had the, uh, if it isn't broken, don't fix it attitude. Being that this has a new membrane, it's been bolt modded. Um, I've gone through, I've detailed the thing top to bottom so that it's nice and spick and span for another 30 to 40 years of uh, <laughs> wishful thinking, I know. Continued and reliable operation. I really would like to replace that barrel plate. So that's going to wrap up this absolutely enthralling experiment in replacing an IBM Model M's defective membrane. It's now returned to 100% operational condition at the hands of a complete and total novice.